All right, everyone, nice having you right here. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to create this particular dashboard right on your screen using this particular data set. So in the next video, I'm going to show you how to create this particular dashboard using the same data set. So now it's your turn. Can you tell me which among these particular two dashboards was built with Power BI or Microsoft Excel? All right, I believe somebody must have guessed right. So this very one right here was built using Microsoft Power BI while this one was built using Microsoft Excel. I am going to show you how to actually build every single thing from the scratch. So before then, let us take a look at the dashboard requirements. All right. Now that you have actually seen the dashboard requirements, the next thing you have to do is to make sure you download all the resources files we are going to be using for this particular dashboard to your PC, have it unzipped and follow along step by step. We are going to be starting with the Power BI version and for the Microsoft Excel version, I have the link below this very video. So click on it and actually watch it. So see you in the class. Okay, as you can see, we have a blank slate right here. There is nothing on it, no data. So how do we get started? We need to pick our data from Excel and access database. So click over here and uh, it's going to take you to where you have the data right in. For the call center data 2024, we have it here. Click on open. So now we have table one and uh, sheet one and two right here. So this one contains the data we are looking for. This one as well contains the data we are looking for, but this one contains and that data that we don't need. So you can choose between this particular table and this table is all a choice. Let's go with this one. Then click on transform data. So now we have our first data right here for 2024. So the next thing we have to do is to connect to 2023 data. But this time around, we don't have to go back to Power BI again. Just click over here and let's go ahead and look for access database by clicking on that more. So over here, you can see we have the access database right here. Just click on connect. So inside your folder, you're going to find this particular call center 2023, just go ahead and click on open. So here we go. Just click on this and uh, click on OK. So we now have our two tables right here. The next thing we have to do is to make sure we combine this particular two data together. We call it append. So we need to append the queries. So what we need to do now is to make sure we stay on home and go to the right top corner right here. Click on this. Your choice is going to be maybe adding a new table or actually appending the previous one to this particular current one we are writing right now. But I'm going to do new because I want to have this particular two sheets or two data to stand on their own. So I'm going to select the second one I want to append with this one, which is this particular one right here. And what I will do is to click on OK. Mind you, if you have more than two data, you can click on three or more and you can actually keep on selecting till you get it all. So click on OK right here. So here we have append one. All I need to do now is to just make sure I name this one data set Dizel. So over here now, if you look at this particular table, there is nothing like an ID here. If I click over here, because this one is coming from access database, it's going to actually automatically give you an ID, which it is not even add to your data. So for that, we're going to have that particular issue right here. If I scroll to this end, here we go. Let's see. Let's see. Okay, here is it. This is the ID here. On this particular ID, if I click on it, here you see we have null, and that null is coming from this particular table that does not have the ID. So for that, there is no need for we to keep this ID. So maybe you are actually thinking like, why do you have this particular one here that is showing valid error and empty, and I don't have it? That was because I turned this on 
every single time I work on data. So to do that, go over to view and make sure you actually check the column quality right here. And that gives you the quality of every single column in your data set. Over here now, as you can see, we have 50% valid and 50% empty. So for that, there is nothing for me to keep here. I'm going to have it removed. So on this particular one here, what we can do with it is to make sure we convert it to a date instead of date and time. So we now have it on the right data set. So over here, this is actually a decimal number. That is cool. Then we can scroll to this end to verify all of this and see which one needs to be some kind of changed. Then we have the first name and the last name. We need to combine them together, which is very simple and easy. Hold down your control key to select the second one and make sure it's not the other way around. If you select this one, the last name will come before the first name. So make sure you select the one that should come first, then hold your control key to select the next one. Then right click and go over to merge columns. Okay, now for the separator or the limiter, select space and over here, give it the name you really want to actually have. I'm going to use full name and over here, I'm going to click on OK. Now I have it as just one single column. Oh, we have not made any verification to see if we have our data appended and two tables are actually together right now. To do that, if I click over here, you can quickly see if I scroll through, I start seeing 2024. If I go back up, I see 2023. So if you cannot find it with ease, what you can do instead is for you to actually make sure you click on this particular add column. So from add column, you can actually go to this particular date and go to year here and click on extract the year for you. Over here, you can quickly see that you have the two years actually combined for you, which is something very, very simple, right? So we don't actually need this one. In Power BI, there is, or in Power Query rather, there is nothing like Ctrl Z. So what you can do is to actually time travel to remove it from applied step. Over here, we have the step insert add year. You can click on this to have it removed. Okay, let us check around to see what else do we need to actually, you know, control. There is nothing, everything looks so sharp and okay. But the one thing is this, there is not need for us to actually get these particular two tables into our Power BI environment. So what can we do instead? We can actually stop it from loading to Power BI by doing right click and come over here and uncheck this enable load. Do the same thing to this particular one right here, right click and uncheck this and that is all you need to do. You cannot see the italic, which means they're actually not going to go with us. So once you're done, go back to home and over here, close and apply. As you can see, we have our data right here and it's just one single table. The other table does not come here with us because we actually stopped it from loading into Power BI. And if you want to see your data, Go over to the table view and here you can see the data that you actually have and this is all we need to do for the first time by getting our data into power bi we're going to be starting with the kpis we have right here so all we need to do is to build it once and replicate the same code for the other one which means we can start with either total calls call reached deal closed or the deal values right here and i'm gonna have uh, something like this here to actually navigate through it to see the last month quarter or the last year and make a comparison for it to actually make sense with the call center data set so let's do it quickly over here we have this i'm going to actually come up with just a card right here just normal card you can right click here to insert a visual and this visual is inserted for you you can convert it to a card right here okay so if i actually come over here and bring this particular total calls in this is going to be the total calls that had been made in the call center but unfortunately this particular one here cannot be reused this is actually implicit measure we need to create an explicit measure that we can actually reuse over and over again in other measures for we to get exactly what we actually want so for that i'm gonna actually organize all my measures in a single table and as well create folders to actually store them so that it will be very easy for me to track to do that, let me just collapse this. 
So I'm going to come over to this particular insert here and go to enter data. So all I need to do is to just call this one DAX measures, right? Then go over here and click on load. All right, our DAX measure table is right in here. The very first thing I need to do right now is to make sure I right click inside it and click on new measure. Then we have to quickly create a measure that actually summarizes the column call to tag calls for us. To actually zoom in and out, you can use your, hold your control key down, the plus or minus key, you can see how it is. Okay, now over here, I'm gonna put here total calls equals then i write my sum function here and i do total calls if i close and hit my enter key this is the thing we need to do to make sure we create something that we can actually reuse again so for you to see what is going to happen let me put it with this particular comma separator and we're going to actually get this one into a card as well if you look at it, we have the same exact number right here. The only difference is that this one is explicit measure. This one is an implicit measure that cannot be reused. So I'm going to get this one away. We're going to start using this one right now. So before we can continue from here, we need a date table, which is something very, very simple to create because without a date table, there is no way our KPI can actually come to life. It's something very simple. We can both build it from the scratch if you want to follow me step by step. Let's go over here and take a look at this particular table tools and over here, we'll click on new table. So with our new table here, I'm going to name my table calendar. So here we go. So we first of all have add columns. This particular add columns will add more columns to our table. Maybe that will confuse you. Let us remove the add column here. Sorry for that. So instead, I'm going to do calendar auto. So have this closed and uh, hit the enter key to see what is going to happen. So the calendar auto will go into my this set and actually find this particular date right here, scan the maximum and the minimum date and actually retrieve the date for me, right? If you look at it right now, we're going to have two years of data right here. To verify that, let us add one more column. This time around to add a column, what we need to do is to click on this particular top here, shift, enter, and we actually bring this in. It's called add column. That will actually give us the privilege to add more columns to our date table. So with my comma right here, it's actually asking me name one. So what is the name of the column do I want to add? So my shift key to indent it, I'm going to do year. So close with my comma right here, I'm going to use the year function. So with your function, hold, I just bring your square bracket. It's going to give you this particular date. This date is this particular date right here. So we're going to be using this particular date over and over again to get it with is always click on your square bracket to bring it up for you with ease. Then your tab key to actually bring it up. Here we go. We can actually go ahead and control shift, just shift, enter, give more space and close and hit the enter key. Over here now, if I click on this now, we can see we have just two years of data because this particular table was scanned, right? So we want to add more columns. The columns we want to add right now is like month, weekday, week type, and even quarter. So to add that is very easy. If I put my comma right here, I'm going to go ahead and actually add the columns I want. So over here, I'm going to type in month. So we close and for the month, we're going to use a function called format. So the format function, as I've said earlier, the square bracket, here we go. With the comma right now, we type in the shorter format to three M's and we close, we hit that comma again. Now we go for the, sec the next one. And this particular time, I'm going to do month number, MN for month number. And over here, I'm going to use the month function. So with the month function here, my square bracket, tab key, close now and that comma again to start my next one. So this time around, we're going to do, um, that will be for weekday. So weekday, comma again, then we're going to be using the format function here. So with the format function, we can do this and put a comma right here, DD, 
and uh, we close, we put on that comma again. We actually say, okay, for this time around, we're going to do a week number, week number. So I actually wrote WN for week number is optional. You can make it full if that is what you want. So we're going to use weekday function and over here we bring this in. So and that comma again, this time around, we need for week type but before week type let's do for quarter first so for quarter it's going to be qtr qtr here so now i'm going to do for quarter quarter has a function that can actually return numbers of quarters for you so that there are different ways to do this though so quarter and uh, we do this we close and finally if i hit my enter key right now let's see what is going to happen so we have every single column we have actually added here and this is exactly what it is that we are looking for now we have the year the month the month number the week the weekday week number and the quarter unfortunately the quarter is not making any sense because it's actually from one to four so how do we add q to it or quarter to it to make sure it make more sense than just having it as a number let's go back here now over here, I'm going to actually say, okay, I want to actually add Q to it. I can do this, Q here. And if I actually just do this and hit my enter key, it will give me an error because Power BI does not understand that Q. Can you see? It underlines it for me and it's giving you some actually error syntax. So what do we do instead? We have to make sure we concatenate it. To do that, over here, I can do this ampersand and that will solve the whole problem for me can you see it now i have q1 q2 3 and uh, q4 so if you want to actually put some kind of dash in it you can come over here put a dash and once you hit your enter key that would actually correct it for you okay let us quickly explore something before we come back here and uh, make things happen over here we have this as our value for total cost. What if we want to see total cost based on a monthly basis? We can convert this into a table just like this. Then we come over to our calendar here and we bring month. So if you look at it right now, it's a little bit weird. So let me just quickly crank it up for you to see what I'm talking about. Go to value here and uh, we can actually increase this as much as we like. It's now visible. The header, we can increase it. Okay. Now this is what it is that we have over here. Let's click over here and swap it. Take this one to the top. If you look at it right now, it's giving us the same value all true. That was because there is what we call relationship is not existing between our data and our data table. Let us quickly solve that particular problem. Go over to this particular model view here and uh, let's see. I'm going to just hide this one. Then over here, I have this particular table to be some kind of something that has no connection with other tables. So I'm going to shift it away and bring this one down here. Over here, I'm going to keep this one and uh, make it this way. So I'm going to take this particular date and plug it to this one here. So over here, we have the connection. One to many. Click on OK. So. If I should move this now, you can see this one has one, this one has many of the date repeating itself. So the date is actually working well now. Let's see it. So can you see it right now? It's not working well. It's not giving us repetition of the grand total again, but still something is still wrong a little bit right here. So look at our month. It started from April and it ends in September. That was why I added a month number. If we go back here now, so we can click on the month here and uh, go over to this particular column tools and sort by column then we'll click over the month number remember it's mn for month number and that will definitely do the work for us we can do the same thing for our weekday right here we sort our weekday by week number and that will actually solve that problem we're gonna have with the weekday so if we go back right now it's now from january down to december right so what if we want to see how we are doing based on calls on weekday or weekend so how do we actually know that right let's quickly come over here again and this time around we need to add another column to it so how do we do that it's very simple so let's do it so with my comma right here now i can go ahead and actually add my week type 
So we type here and on that comma again. So with this particular we type here, I'm going to use a function called the switch function. I can use my shift key, then try to write switch. So then put a comma right on it. So this switch function would help me to switch and check if a particular day is weak there or whatever. Okay. Um, there is something I should show you before this. Let me just cut this one off. Control X will cut it for me. Down to here. Control X will cut it for me. I can just cancel this. Let's see something here. So over here, if you look at it, Saturday falls under 7. Sunday falls under 1. So which means Saturday and Sunday, they are all weekends, right? It depends on the country you are. You can follow me to actually make sure you match it with the weekend you have in your country. In some countries, I think Thursday and Friday will be their weekend. So you can actually do the same thing by matching it up with your own kind of weekend in a country. So for that, I'm going to follow what I have in my country. So control V to bring it back here. So remember here, let me take this one off. Say so comma here. Now we have with type as the name we want to appear over here. Then this particular switch will now help us to do something. So once we have our switch here, all I'm going to do, I'm going to actually say uh, weekday. So we bring this particular one in. So we're going to close this and ask if it is equal to seven. Then comma, that means it's weekend. Can you see it now? Come again, you switch and check this particular weekday for me and see if this particular weekday is equals to one, then it's still weekend. You get it right now? Weekend. Otherwise, it's going to fall under weekday. So we close our switch function. And if I hit my enter key right now, what should we expect? We don't have it. We have the column inserted for us. So here we have the two. So let us select our weekend. So our weekend falls on the Sunday and Saturday, right? Can you see? On the one and uh, seven. This is what it is. Very simple. So I can actually unfilter this one here. Clear filter from all. Let's bring this back and let's see what happens. So over here, this is actually the name of our column. This particular switch function is only checking row by row to see if a particular row is equal to seven, it's going to assign weekend to it. If a row is equal to one, it's going to assign weekend to it. Otherwise, other rows that does not, you know, meet seven and one will be under weekday. It's very simple, right? So we have gotten our date ready and the next thing now is for we to actually go back here and start right now measure but excuse me would that make any sense i i think a little let's see what happens when we don't do the last thing we should have done with our date table what might actually happen over here i'm going to select my date here so if you look at it this is what we have now so we have our date grouped because this is, we are still using some part of the system date, you know, functionality in our date or in the date we have created. So this happened because we have not actually tell Power BI to like, you know what? I got my date right now. Can you actually deactivate the default date you have? I don't want to use it. So how do we do that? Let us quickly go back over here. And now we are on our date table. Make sure the date table is clicked and you can see it on view. Let's go to table tools and over here we see mark as a date table. So we make sure we turn this on, select this and select date. Then we click on save. That will definitely solve the whole problem for us. If we now go back right now, the grouping has been deactivated. We now have it as one like this. So if we go back here, we can decide to check, just search through to see which one will give us what we want. So click over here to like use a shorter format like this one here. Let's see if we go back here, it's updated. Do you see this now? I believe you have learned something. If you have just learned something new that you have never learned before, what would you do? subscribe like and share to your friends and family so if need be leave a comment let me know what you feel about this particular video 
Let us focus on our KPI. I'm going to click on this one and remove the month we have right on it from here, or the date rather. And we convert this back to a card, just like a normal card for now, like this. A normal card like this for now. So if we have this particular card right here, we are trying to actually see what is the comparison with the previous month right this is just what we have holistically right now so what if i actually go over to my calendar and bring the month in here and i'm gonna actually have this month as a filter so i'm gonna bring this here so we now have the month here as a filter so if i click on february for example here so we cannot tell if we are doing well or not by comparing February to January. So what do we do instead? We need to actually create what can actually help us to see the comparison between February and January. And when we select other month like March, March will be compared to the previous month and the previous month of March is February, right? So how do we do that? It's very simple. We need to add a measure. So to add a measure, we have to click over here. You can click on new measure here to create your measure. So for the previous month call, all we need to do is to make sure we use the calculate function to change the filter context. So over here, I'm going to do um, my revenue. Sorry, I said revenue. My total cost right here. So with the comma, all I need is to actually retrieve the previous month. So I'm going to do previous month. It's a function. So we have previous day, previous month, down to previous quarter, and as well previous year. So we are using previous month right here. So the previous month is looking for the date. So we're going to get date from our calendar table, right? So here we go. This very one here. Then we just go ahead and close our previous month. And then we close for our calculate. Then we hit the enter key. This is all we need to do for the first time. Okay, once we have done this, we can now take a look at our calculation to see what it is. I'm going to bring this here. So if need be, I want to make sure, uh, let me just duplicate this one for you to understand what we are actually getting into. So always make sure you show everything on a table format before you definitely finally show it on a KPI card. Sometimes show it on a card with some dimension for you to understand what is going on. So I'm going to turn this one into a table. So right now it has this particular filter. I don't want to have this filter on it. What should I do? I want to deactivate this filter over this one. So make sure you click on this one here, go to format and click on edit interaction. Now the filter is gone. No matter how I actually filter this right now, it's not going to affect this very one. Then click back on this and that is all. So I can actually stretch this out, right? Then quickly, let us put it on 20. Then over here for the value, we put it on something like 30 or 25 is okay. So let's do have our total calls than the previous month right here. Can you see it right now? So here we go. So in the previous month, January does not have any data for previous month, so we have it as blank. This is what we have in January. The previous month is this particular one right now. So if I actually go ahead and some kind of go and show you what we have down here right now, this is what we have here, right? So why are you seeing this? The question you might be having in mind right now, where is this particular one coming from? This is coming from the previous year right it might look a little bit confusing let's go over to here for you to understand what i'm talking about let's quickly click on this and make sure it appears as a filter and uh, let's go over to this slider settings here and make sure we change it to tile so let us select one single year let's go with 2023 so 23 now we can understand where this number is coming from this number is retrieved from january then we can actually make a comparison with this this is what we have right i believe this one is well understood you need to understand all of this before we finally create our dashboard you need to understand the elementary part of what we are doing rightly right so if you can get this right now you get the rest and see what this so let's quickly do something else 
if you now look at here, we try to show based on calls and on last month here, what we are showing right now is the percentage of difference. Let's go over here and select a particular month, the month of February. So we select the year 2023, for example, here. So we're going to select 2023. Now we can actually collapse this to get it hidden again. So can you see it now? So we can see last month, you can see the changes we have right there. Then you can definitely select a different month to view that. So 23 is not selected. We can select like March again. Then when we go over here, we can click and see here it's increased by what? By just 8.2%. So how do we actually get this particular percentage and the value at the same time right here? When it drops, we have the color changed just like this. So let's quickly go ahead and do it. So next again, we need to add another measure. We could have combined all of this measure in one single measure, but that would make it a little bit complicated. So let us split it into different measures to be better. So right click, new measure. Okay, we have a new measure here. I'm going to call this call versus last month okay once i have this right now we want to first of all find the value difference so what i will do is to actually start with a variable here so with my variable i'm going to name this one values difference so equals so for the values difference now I'm going to actually say, take my total calls and subtract it from the previous month calls. That is all. Then, if you do that now, maybe you want to see the results. You can actually do it by coming over here to say return. So with the return now, we try to return our value difference. And that will give you the value difference between this number and this particular number right here. Let us take a look at the physical result of what this is going to give to us. So, here is our value difference, 166 between this particular two number. So this changed based on whatever is selected from our slicer here. Can you see it now? Can you see? This is what it is. So this is not what we want actually. Let's quickly go back over here again. We have gotten our value difference. What if we want to get the percentage difference? So we type in under variable here. So this variable now, we're going to call it underscore PCT, or I can do normal percentage. Percentage difference. So to do that, we use the divide function. So we're going to divide our total calls by our previous month here, right, comma, and for alternate results, we put uh, one. So we close. So I want to have for the negative value, I want to have minus. So I'm going to do minus one. So that is option at all. So if you want to look at what result this will actually give to us right now, we can do return again to return individual, you know, result for you to see. So here I have this, I'm going to hit my enter key. This will going to be on decimal, not problem. Can you see? Then if you convert this to a percentage, just like this, let's see what it's going to give to us. Now we have 32.80%, approximately 33%, just like what we have in the decimal. This is what we have. We now show the value and now the percentage. So how can we combine this to make sense with it? So let's quickly go over here and take off all of those ones from here. So now what we need to do is to actually create another variable. This variable will be underscore symbol. So this symbol, what we want to show is that when the value is high, we want to see plus, just like this particular one now is high, it's not negative, we want to see plus. When the value is low, we want to see a minus sign, right? So we're going to do equals right here. 
and uh, we go over here and say if underscore value comma here okay uh, is greater than zero then comma then what i want you to do for me is to actually give me this particular plus sign or symbol wherever otherwise i want to see nothing but just blank just give me blank that is what you need to give to me give me blank so we go ahead and actually have this closed so right now if I show this right now, it's going to give me a plus without any value on it. So we need to actually make sure we combine the values together, which is very, very important, right? So to do that right now, we're going to do our result variable underscore result if you had been following this particular channel before now you would have known that the reason why i'm putting underscore is for me to quickly you know or easily retrieve my variables from the huge range of functions that we have that might be related to the variable i have actually used so otherwise you can remove the underscore is optional so over here now i'm going to do underscore symbol to combine them together so my symbol come first so if I don't type underscore and I start typing symbol, by the time I put else, it will suggest columns from my data and suggest functions that Power BI actually has as a DAX function. So instead of me doing that and start searching through where is my symbol right here, I rather type in underscore and that would only give me all the, all the variables I've written. Just scroll through and get this. Okay. Now we're going to actually do a concatenation with this particular one here. You can just give it space to make it readable. So now we want to say, we want to format the percentage because we want the percentage to come first. So to format the percentage right now, we use format to format how we want the percentage to look. So the percentage, the format is looking for a value and that value would be our percentage difference right here, which is underscore percentage difference then comma now it's asking for format how do we want to format this inside double quotes i'm going to type 0, 0.00 if you want to see two decimal places if you want to see just one you remove one zero from it and that is all you need to do then you go ahead and do this and have this closed that is the formatting unit right so we want to actually have some kind of stroke or we have dash or hyphen or a pipe right in it you need to do the ampersand again inside here you put this pipe make a space again and you close and you finally close this do you get it right now so once you have done this the next thing you have to do is to apply symbol again and underscore symbol so with this particular symbol right here, we want to make sure we bring in our value difference. But to bring this value difference, we actually need to use the ampersand here again. Right now, we use the format function to format how we want our value to come. So this format will go underscore the value difference here and comma. Inside it, we just want to make sure we have hash on comma hash comma hash then we go ahead and close this and finally we close this can you see it right now so this is what we need to have so we have closed this particular one right here and this is all we need so what do we need to do next we need to actually return this we have not returned it yet so we can do return so for the return we return our results so you might be asking me, why don't you do this on that return? That was because I still have one thing in mind. But before I go into that, let us hit the enter key to see what our result would look like. Okay, can you now see? This is what we have. I can just get this off. Now, if I bring this over here, or still, Ctrl Z, Ctrl Z to bring back the previous one. I want to have this one back. Okay, we have it back. I can just make sure this goes this way. And I'm going to bring this one over here. So it looks a little bit rough. This is what it is. Now, can you see it now? 
So if I now go over here on my slicer and select January here, January does not have any value, it's giving me blank. I don't want to see this particular blank. What do I do to remove the blank? There is something you can do to remove the blank because there is no value for this. We shouldn't see blank. And if we come over to the main results here, as you can see, because there is no value, it's returning back the value for you, not the difference. So you can do something on this, right? So let us quickly see what we can do to make sure this is not the case we actually see. So let's go back to our main. Although that is optional, let's go back. We shouldn't add any other code to make it some kind of too rough. This one is not going to be shown alone. So for that, there will be no issues with having blanks. But right now we have achieved the result we want. So all we need to do right now, we can actually clear this one off. And over here, if you look at the changes between this particular one and this one right here, and that is gonna be this right in here. So let's quickly get this off as well. We don't want to see this one. And over here for the time being, we can drag this one and put it at the bottom right here. Then for this particular one, there is no use to keep it. And this one right here, we are using the previous, which is the card that only allows one single value in it. So if I click over here right now, I can now see over here, I have the new card. I'm going to click on the new card and I have something like this. It is time for we to make use of this particular card for what we really want to show. Okay. How do we go ahead and actually show the values, which is the main uh, difference right here, both in percentage and in normal values is very simple. So what I'm going to do now is to make sure I some kind of stretch this. Now we have a reference label here. So make sure you click on this particular ad or you can drag this one into here and that gives you what is here. So right now it's interactive, it's changing plus one. Then if we keep on going through, you can see where we have minus, we have it. So this is what it is that we really want. So if you look at it right now, it says calls versus last month, call versus last month here. So we don't want this particular name in it. We want to actually type in our name ourselves. So what can we do? We can actually click on this. Let me make it bigger. Now, if we have this now, first of all, under the reference, I can go ahead and make sure it's showing this. So it's showing this on 12 for now. So if we go down here, we have the value here where you can actually increase what you really want to see. Now we are seeing 13. Then if we go back up here, we have a title that we can actually turn off or we can bring it back on. So if I click over here, I can actually select this particular call versus last month right here. And over here we have name, we can select the custom name we want to actually use. Now, instead of we having this one here, I can rather have just the versus last month. So by just getting this one off, it makes it shorter for me. Let's do something like this will be cool. This is what I want. Very short for me. You just do a custom of what you want. But if you look at it right now, everything is not right. There is no color right here that tells us if it is good or bad, which means we need to add another, you know, um, something under DAX function to actually help us do that. By coming over here now, right click and you click on new measure. Okay, I would like to actually keep this one for later because there is a reason I'm actually keeping this one. We want to have for months, for quarter, and for years. So for that, we're going to combine the conditional formatting in one single one. So let me just get this one off and let us see what we can do about it. So over here, we have for the... Uh, for just for the month, which is this one, how do we create for quarter? It's going to be very simple. I mean, when I say very simple, it's very, very simple. All we have to do is to make sure we actually copy this particular one right from here, control C to copy, and uh, we create a new one. 
So we are not writing anything from the scratch, just paste it. And instead of you to look at it by previous month, we rather go by previous year. So over here, we change this one to year. Then we hit enter key. This is all the changes we need to make on this one. Then the next one is going to be this very one right here. Then we just go ahead and copy. Then we go ahead and click on new measure. We paste this one in. Let us scroll up. So instead of last month, we do last year. Then over here, we're going to change this particular one to last year. So we change this one to last year. That's the comparison we're making for last year. Then is there another thing to change? There is nothing to change again. Everything seems to be correct right in here. And that is what I want to do. So once we are done, we just make sure we hit our enter key and that is going to do it for us. So now we have this here for the quarter and as well for the month. So for the year and for the month, we need to actually get for quarter. Let us start from here for the quarter. So make sure you control C to copy, create a new measure and paste this one into it. So we paste this in here and all we need to do now, instead of year, we select previous quarter. So here we type in QTR for quarter. <laughs> so we select this particular one right here. We control C, we paste a new one into a new measure that we're gonna create. So paste, go up. So last quarter, just Q here. So we type in Q, you do this. Then you do this. This is all you need to do right here. Hit your enter key. So on this particular section of our two, our tutor calls, we have actually created almost all the measures we want. We have two other measures to be created, and those two measures can be created with when we have other, you know, our measures. Some kind of let's see here. If I take you here right now, so if you look at this is for total calls, we want to create for the deals and um, the call reach and stuff like that. Then we can create this particular table that will bridge them together. So this is what we can actually do right now over here before we do that. So I'm going to keep this one aside right here. Don't worry about how it looks. It's going to look beautiful in a Jiffy. So for that, all I need to do now is to control C and control V to paste it down and bring this over here. So I want to actually go over to this particular model view and we turn this property on. Then we come over here. We hide this particular calls by clicking on hide in report view. So we have that one hidden. So I'm going to actually make sure I select every single measures I have right in here using my control or my shift key that would multi select everything for me, exclude this particular one that is hidden. Now, what do I, do I need to do? Come over here and type in total calls. That is it. You hit your enter key. It has created a folder for you where we put this inside a folder. If we go back right here right now, we can now see that we have it in a folder. So all I need to do now is just to actually say, okay, I want to create another one. Right click here and now create a new measure. So this particular measure will be total um, call reached. So equals, this is going to be the sum of call reached here and that is all. So with our total call reached right now, we have started a new one right here. And all we need to do is just to make sure we recycle through this, right? So which is very, very simple. So if I click on this right now, I'm going to start with the previous year. So just go ahead and actually control A, control C to copy. Then we click over here to create a new measure. 
So we only need to change the measures we have. Daiso. I'm going to show you just one and I will replicate the remaining one. So paste this right here. So here is going to be called reached. Then we remove this one here and we bring total call reach. So I can control C to copy and hit my enter key. Then go ahead and create a new measure again. This one should be for your month. So here is going to be month. Over here should be month as well. That is all you need to do. Hit the enter key. Now we create for quarter. You can see how simple and easy it is. The very first one is the biggest work you have. So create a new measure. So we paste this in. So we have for month and year. So over here we're creating for quarter. QTR. So we go ahead and call rich is okay. So we put here the quarter. And for this section, this is what we need. So we have done this previous of a thing. The next thing is for we to actually do fill up this one by control C to copy and paste it right into here. So now even if you are here, it will automatically jump out of the folder because it was not originally included in this folder. So go ahead and paste. Let us go back up here. So at the top here, this is call. It's going to be call rich. So we're going to change this one. Make sure you highlight this one. Now to make it easy is for you to actually do Control Shift and L is to highlight everywhere you have this particular measure inside for you and remove it. And over here, we're going to do call reach. You change it at once. Can you see? Mostly when you have multiple ones and you want to change it all at once, you can do that. So do the same thing with this particular one right here. Control Shift L and remove it. So we go ahead and do previous uh, quarter for call reach. So we do previous quarter for call reach. And here we go. Can you see how easy it is right now? Then once we are done, Control A, Control C to copy and uh, make sure you commit this. So go ahead and create a new measure. So we paste this one in. So all we do right now is to make sure instead of quarter here, we're going to do for y which is the year this one is going to be like this so over here we're going to type in the year you can see how easy it is right so here we go we hit enter key so now we have done for quarter and year we're doing for month so we do for month So over here, you can select this one. That is it. We're done with this. Can you see it right now? So we have just created for our call reached. And if you look at it, we're going to create for deals and deal values. How many deals we've had from all the calls and as well the deal values, how much we've made from every single deal. So you have gotten the knowledge of how you can actually go ahead and do that all by yourself right now the next thing you have to do once you have done this go over here and uh, over here and make sure you put all of this inside a folder hold the shift key to multi select and select this one from it then you come over here now calls reached so now it's in a, a single folder it's going to be very easy for you to track once you start creating your visualization can you now see it over here individually on a different folder so what you can do right now if you want to actually update this one is for you to click over here and uh, instead of calls we actually need to go over here and we go for total call reached so we have this value it has dropped the other one for us so what we need to do right now is to make sure we always 
remove the decimal places by putting zero over here hit the enter key that would wipe off the zero we have on it the next thing is for we to go over to the reference label that we have here and uh, we bring in our pre our what way need to bring in here i think we've not created that one let's see how we can see everything we have here so now we have all the uh, measures we want and you can see over here we have folders for every single one of them so make sure you actually do the same thing i have done right now it is something you have known actually did this in our presence and this one as well behind the scene i created this particular one which is very very important for you to know so make sure you create everything and uh, come back and watch this video so if you have done that let's do it the first thing you're going to do to make sure you do something that makes a lot of sense because right away there is no way we can change this to last year we have just last month right here right now for to change it to last year last quarter we need a table so if i just want one kpi this particular modeling and as well new parameter and the field parameter would have done that for me but right now i want this to be applicable to every single kpi cards i have right here so what do i need to do instead i have to go over to here and click over this particular enter data and create a table that you're going to use to filter between the last quarter last month and as well last year so over here i'm going to call this one here let's call this so i'm going to call this one compare so over here i'm going to just type in versus last year so here is going to be versus last month this one is going to be versus last quarter. This is all I need, right? So you can name this one NT you want. Let's just name this one to be like um, switch for KPI. Just type anything you can remember, whatever. So right now, just go ahead and click on load. Our suite for KPI is here. We only have one single column in it. Then if I go over here now, let us look at what we have inside this switch for column. So what we have here is just this. Then how are we going to use this? So I'm going to get this one here and I'm going to make sure it's actually a filter. So now we have a filter that can actually help us to select and change the view that we see on our KPI. So let us bring it forward here. Now, if I select, nothing happens, it's not actually doing anything. So this is where the magic actually comes in, right? So for the very first time, what I'm going to do is to go over here and uh, let us start with last month or uh, with the total calls rather not last month total calls using the total calls now i am going to actually make sure i actually create a new measure with this new measure here i'm going to do just something like this something very simple now in here we're going to check what is selected here we can see fiscally now that what is selected is versus last month right the last year rather so what we need to do is to actually use this particular switch function to check sorry um selected value rather selected value will check for us what is on selection and i'm gonna go ahead and say switch switch this one here then if i hit my enter key right now I am going to return whatever I selected on a card. Then we can both see what is on selection. Can you see? This is what is on selection currently. Then we're going to use this to switch between what we have here. So if I click back on this now, all I need to do is to pass this into a variable. So over here is going to be variable underscore select 
equals. So which means this one now is stored inside here. Then we can use this one. We don't have to repeat this one over and over again. Then over here, if we come down here, we can create another variable or we can just return this. We don't need to do something complicated. So return this very one here. And if we have it returned, what we can do is to use the switch function to get that done. So the switch function here, switch true, comma. And over here, what I'm going to do is to actually say underscore my select. If my select here is actually equals to a particular thing I have inside my total calls folder, I want you to return something for me. So now we do equals. So if it is equals to versus last year, comma, so we close and we hit a comma right here. What do we want? We want to return something. And what we want to return is a measure. And that will be total calls, right? That is calls. Here we see calls versus last month, call versus last quarter, and last year. And what we want to return currently is last year. We go with this one. And that is all we need to do. So we put a comma right here, we go down, we do under selection, we do this, and we say if this is equals to versus last month, then put a comma right on it, and we go for what? We go for month. So under comma, this is the last one. Do we have to check again? If you want to actually check, you can check, but if you don't want to check, you can actually leave that out. So let us create under check again. So we can just do equals and over here we do versus last uh, quarter. Then we close and what we want to return is to return this and comma otherwise give us nothing but blank. Go ahead and close and hit our enter key. This time around we should be expecting value on the card we have plugged in. So if I now select, can you see now? It's returning this for me. So if I change it to this, it has changed. To this now, it has changed. This was why I said, you know what? We should actually wait until we have everything done before we can do this so that it will be very easy for me to replicate. So now we have this right here versus last month, right in here. So 11%. This is what we have. So let's see. So we select February, select this, select this, making changes, and everything is actually reflecting just like what we want. Can you see it now? This is what we want. Okay, before we finally replicate the same thing we have done now for every single part of it, let us see how we can do a conditional formatting so that we can see the conditional formatting over here before we definitely implement it on our KPI card. Very simple. Click on this one and go over here for new measure. This is very simple and easy. So I'm going to type in CF. Anyway, CR, any, anyway, you see CF, I always mean conditional formatting. So I'm going to do that for total calls equals, right? So quickly, I'm going to make a check using variable here. And this variable will do underscore. I'm going to call it underscore check. So check. So why is it checking? It's checking that same table we've checked, which is our switch for KPI you know, table. So I'm going to do selected value here. So with my selected value, it's going to check the switch, which is this one for me to check what is actually on selection. After checking this right now, we want to use the switch function to get it done. So we are trying to change color. This time around, we're going to actually create another variable here. And this variable will be called switch. So switch, so I'm going to put my equals right here. Ordinarily, if I remove this now and start typing switch, can you see it now? It wouldn't allow me. And that was because this is a tax function is preserved for only the system to use. You cannot use it except you want to call it for a particular purpose that you want to use it to return something. Otherwise, if you must use this, you have to make sure you 
do underscore and you can type in switch without having any error that pops out so over here if i put my equal sign here i'm gonna say okay you know what it's going to do for me you're gonna switch sorry i think this is switch yeah switch so we put equals so now i'm gonna do normal switch here and uh, put it true so you put a comma on it then over here we're gonna say go ahead and actually check this and see if this equals to um versus last month so that is gonna be versus last month if that is true what i want to do for me is to take the total calls that is let's go down here and say total calls total calls we subtract that from the previous month calls minus what previous so we start locating where we have the previous previous month calls into here that is previous month previous month So here we have our previous month call. We subtract it from it. And once we have done that, we put a comma right on it, shift, enter. We now do another check right now and actually ask if this one is equals to versus last quarter. Then if that is the case right here, we need to do total calls. So we subtract what? We subtract the previous. So the previous month calls, this one now is going to be previous quarter calls, which is this very one here. So once we have done that, we put a comma again. We have to make one other check, but that one I told you is optional. Why would we make a check again if that it is? So what we need to do is just to actually go straight up and say, otherwise, we want to actually say total calls minus this previous year calls right so we are done with our check-in we can do this and now under the return here so we are going to say if so i'm gonna do if and i'm gonna do underscore this particular switch function here so if this particular switch here, so not switch function rather, the switch variable we created, I'm talking about this very one here. We're gonna say if it is greater than zero, we want to have a particular color that we're gonna use. So for the time being, let us just use a particular color to show an example. I'm gonna say show me green. So I'm gonna put my green in here, then do this and put a comma right here. Otherwise I want to see red. And I'll do this close and hit my enter key. This time around, it wouldn't do it then because we have not used it. Let us go ahead and see how we can actually apply this on our project. So click over here now. Go over to this particular one. This is where we should have changed the color to whatever color we want. Let's say I want to have something like this color here. It has changed it to the color for me. If I want something like this particular color here, it has changed it for me. This is manual. You have to do the changings yourself. So let's go over to FX here and click and change field value. Now over here, search for CRF conditional formatting. We click on this. We click OK. Now we have green. Let us keep on going and see where we have some kind of down. Do you see it now? This is what it is. Can you see it? Do you see it? This is dynamic. This is exactly what I'm talking about. So you can do anything you like over here. So you have just created your conditional formatting for this. And this actually marks it to be completed measures for our Twitter calls. So what we need to do now is to actually copy this same one. So when we copy the same one, what we are going to do is to actually make it for every single measures that we have what am i talking about over here we have a total calls uh, total call reached deals value and uh, what 
oh, we have the two deals value right here. So total deals and deals value right here. So we're going to do it for every one of it, which is something very simple. Let me show you how simple it is. So this particular one here has actually helped us to switch what we want. We are returning this. So all I need to do now is to copy. And uh, before I do that, I would love to go over here. Then once I'm here, I want to make sure I drag this into what? I drag this into my folder called calls. Here is it. So I'm going to drag this into the call folder. Can you see it now? So drag the call compare into the call folder. Once it's here, you drop it. So if we now go back here now, you can now see it's not found anywhere. It's actually sitting in a particular folder. So when we want to use it, we have to come over here to pick it. So now to create for other ones, you create a new measure. So let us paste the one we copied here. So let us say we are doing this for deals. So um, we're going to do this one for deals. So deal closed versus last year. So this one will be deal closed versus last month. So make sure it matches what is here, otherwise you would have error. So this one will be deal closed versus last quarter. You see that now? So over here, instead of we having calls, we're going to see deal closed. And if I hit my enter key, I have for deal. So I can actually use this one to get that done. This is just for me to actually switch. It will be very easy for me to switch through. Now, if I go over here now, we are going to actually copy the CF, which is conditional formatting as well. And do the same thing. Close, click over here and create a new measure. So now we have to make a change to only focus on the deals. So control V to paste it. So over here, instead of me having the previous month calls, and this one is going to be previous month deal closed. Can you see it now? I can just do this. Control Shift L. And uh, if I do that, it's going to affect this, right? What I need to do now is to do it manually. So I'm going to actually take it off. And here I'm going to do deal closed for quarter. So this one as well, deal closed for that is for the year. Can you see it now? So this is month, quarter, and year, which is very correct. So the next thing we have to do is to make sure we come over here and we update this very one, which is important. So deal closed. And we hit the enter key. So we have two left. So do that and see what we can do to bring everything together and create that particular design you have in mind. Now, let us start creating from the scratch. I'm going to go over here to insert the new card. I have my new card here. So, with my new card here, I'm going to start with total calls in here. Then open up this very one. Sorry, not this one. This particular... Okay, I think yes, this very one here. And I go to the reference label here. Instead of me to bring in last month, last quarter, last year, I bring in this particular calls compare in here. Then this one here is going to actually respond to whatever I select from here. Can you see it right now? Whatever has been selected from here, right? So if I take it to this, we have this. So maybe what you might be seeing here right now is that why do we have 0, 0.0 and here we have minus, you know, 154. So if we should actually bring out what is causing the problem, we have to come to here and include 10 to have two decimal places on our percentage. That will reveal what percentage we have right there. So now you can see it's actually minus 0.5 percent. That is correct, right? Okay. What about the 
number formatting. To put the number formatting now, what we need to do is to actually scroll down. So here we have the title here. So on the title, I want to change the title. The title now should be what is actually selected by clicking over here, go to calls, compare, and click over here and change it to custom. On that custom now, you can decide to type it in here or you can actually bring in something that you want to be there. So what if we go over here now and select this, then come over here and go to this particular place and click over here, then we go with this. So if I make a change that reflects what's selected versus last quarter, last year, and if we go back, it's dynamic, last month. But this would have an issue in the long run. I want to actually encounter that issue before I make a change of what I have right here, right now. Okay, so let us actually set up our color. Let us scroll down. We go to value. This value here, we can change it to anything we want. It has changed the color, but that is not what we want. We come over here. We go to this place and here then we search for CF. Remember, we have many CF now. We're going to base it on total calls because that is the KPI we are building. Then we click on OK. So because it drops, we haven't read. So if I put it at something like where we can actually locate, can you see? It's now green, right? This has actually completed this particular KPI for us. This is what we actually want to see. So we have our first KPI here. It's going to be here for the time being. We're going to change the font size, everything to make it more OK. So for now, I'm going to keep this right here. Then go ahead and come to C to duplicate it. And move this duplicate right here. And quickly, let us change this. Instead of us seeing calls now, we rather see call rich. So we open call rich folder. We bring in total call rich. Immediately we brought in total call rich, every other thing disappeared because it has no relationship with this. So all we need to do is to actually go ahead and close this one, bring up call rich, and uh, we bring call rich compare. We put it right in here. That gives us this. So remember, we have to scroll down a little bit and make sure here we select the call rich and over here we select custom, right? And then over here we select this one and go over to switch and click on compare and we'll click on OK. Still, nothing happens. It will, will work so well. So let's scroll down now. Under the value area here, we're going to go with this here and uh, we change this one to this. And over here, we search for CRF and we pick the one that has a call reach and we'll click on OK. And here we go. Right? I'm going to keep it here. And Ctrl C, Ctrl V to drop it. I'm going to drop this right here. Now, this one should be deal closed. Let's make a change of this one. So this is a deal closed here. We scroll down to deal closed. And we'll pick up deal closed here. This is it. So for deal closed, we need to actually go ahead and format it. Let's click on this. Then over here, we'll put zero. And that would remove the two zeros we have after five, eight, nine for us. Then quickly, we have the deal closed here. I'm going to move this particular deal closed compare into here. I have this. You know the drill already. So go over here, select, and uh, click here. Custom. Let's click over here. And now we go over to here and we'll click on this. So we we'll click on OK. So we have not encountered any issues yet, which means sometime probably I can just be some kind of crazy. So this is okay. No issues. Let's go down and uh, pick up the color we want. No, we're going to make it dynamic. So we select this. We go for CF. Then deal closed, deal closed. Here we go. Then we click. Okay, so we paste another one and we do the last one. This one is the deal value. 
So we go over here to change this one to the deal value here. We scroll down to the total deal value. This is the amount of the deal value we have. Then we need to go ahead and close this one, open this one up, and we bring this into here. Very simple, right? So let's scroll down again and change it to this one. This time around, we want to change it to custom. And once we are here, we can go over here and uh, we'll pick this very one here. Okay, it allows us. It looks as if I lied. So sometimes it will look just weird. So all I have to do is to scroll all the way down and uh, we pick up this or oh, no. We go for CF for conditional formatting. And here we type CF and uh, we go for deal, total deal values. And this is all we need to do. Now you can see it's some kind of not working. Otherwise, we don't have been seeing this red. This should be something like green, right? Let us quickly check the conditional formatting we have for this. So let's see deals value. Okay. Now we need to do something over here. Over here, we need to make sure we change this one to make sure it matches total deal value, right? Total deal value you must make sure everything here matches that we're subtracting the right one otherwise it will give us an error in case you actually encounter this particular error this is what actually caused it you want to make sure you match it i think i might have made this same mistake somewhere else let me quickly go ahead and check for every single part of it that is a total the conditional formatting cf here this one was not matching the right one so deal close is what i need to actually be here i have to make sure i bring total deal closed in here right so we just copy this particular one and you replace it with this very one here so that is it this is a common mistake anybody could make so you want to make sure you check every single part of it and make sure you match it. Otherwise, you would have the wrong conditional formatting ever. So we check this one. No, no, no. We are looking for CF, CF, CF is here. Okay. This is it. Total calls. That is right. Call reached. Let's see the CF right here. We go over to this one. And we made the same mistake. That is awkward. So we want to do total call reached and we just copy this particular one and replace it with other ones right here so you can just do this and that is all replaced so this one now will make everything right so if you actually encounter this particular issue that your conditional formatting is not working that is as a result of not updating everything you need so here we go we should actually have it to give us the right match right now can you see this one now is actually on plus this one minus 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 here and it's giving us what we really want and this is exactly what it is so if i actually go see versus last year right now i'm gonna have the changes you know for last year now this is this is the last year if i select this right now because there is no year before 2023 it's going to return back for me this particular 178 and to return every single thing we have on the main value for us and the changes will be zero or plus zero point zero percent which is awkward right so you can decide to actually take it off when there is nothing here you want to see blank here i believe you should know how to write the dax function that would actually do that for you it's just a single variable and you just call it and everything will be done for you okay we have just done the necessary part right now and guys this is just the beginning the designing part of it is going to be very easy and simple and i'll be seeing you when that particular time comes do make sure you subscribe to this particular channel share to your friends and family if need be and see you in my next video